guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to taking, be taking on this awesome integral that you can see on the screen right here. It's actually taken from the Cambridge Integration B. Um, I don't remember exactly which year but it's the very last problem and definitely by far the hardest. I personally have been working on this problem for about two months um, when I finally I learned some new uh, math and I was make, able to make a breakthrough and finally solve the problem. So. We're going to be using complex uh, analysis and contour integration, but if you know a non-complex solution, please contact me because I would love to see something like that uh, using only real numbers. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the integration and look out for my uh, videos teaching contour integration over the next week. So we're going to be using two main identities here. The inverse tangent function um, defined in terms of the complex natural logarithm, which you can see right here. And this lemma, which I proved in my previous video, that for 0 is less than a is less than 1, we have this integral right here, which is going to evaluate to this right here. And we're going to be incorporating that at the end of the integration here. So just keep that in mind. Now note, the way we're actually going to evaluate this is we're going to evaluate it for values of a between 0 and 1. However, as you can see, it doesn't really matter in terms of this integral whether a is between 0 and 1 or between 1 and infinity. So since this is going to be uh, differentiable and continuous, we can argue that due to analytic continuation, the expression that we get for um, the value between a equals 0 and 1 is going to be the same as the expression we get for a between 1 and infinity. So we're going to be evaluating it for a less than 0 and 1, but it's going to apply for all values of a. So let's go ahead and jump right into the contour integration. So we're going to be considering this contour integral. I'll show you our um, actual contour in a moment. So it's just the exact same function. Uh, again, 0 is less than a is less than 1. Then, of course, we're going to expand natural log of 1 plus z squared as ln 1 minus uh, iz plus ln 1 plus iz. And you can go ahead and check and multiply those together and see you, that you are going to get 1 plus z squared. And as I stated before, we're going to be using this expression for inverse tangent of z. So this means that our actual contour is going to be the integral of i over 2 uh, times these natural logs using the difference of squares right here uh, over z times z squared plus a squared dz. So this is going to be our contour right here. It's the same contour we used in my last video. So let's go ahead and go over it. First of all, we're going to be integrating from negative r to positive r as r goes to infinity on the real axis right here. And that's going to give us the integral from negative to infinity to a negative infinity to infinity of our function, which if we just take half that is going to be the same as the interval from 0 to infinity, which is what we're looking for. Then we're going to go up along the semicircle on this contour that I'll call gamma 1. And then in order to avoid the branch cut of ln 1 plus iz, which runs up from uh, z equals i up to i infinity, we're going to uh, come down right here following this path i1 just to the right of the line um, of the imaginary axis here. Then we're going to go in a small circle around the branch point. We'll call that uh, section our lowercase gamma curve. And then just to the left of the imaginary axis, we're going to integrate back up to i infinity, and we're going to wrap back around on this contour gamma 2. So let's go ahead and discuss how this is going to work. First of all, our total contour integral, which I'll just represent with this contour integration symbol, is going to be 2 pi i times the residue of f of z at i a. I forgot to mention that. This is the only residue that we're going to have. And as you can see, this is the reason why we're choosing a to be between 0 and 1, because that way we have this residue um, on the inside of our contour here, and it's not making us have to deal with some nasty pulls up here. So this is also going to be equal to our real axis integral, which we'll just call i for now, plus the gamma integrals, plus this other gamma integral, plus i1, plus i2. So now let's go ahead and evaluate all these different parts so that we can add them all together for our final answer. Now note that as r goes to infinity, f of r e, r e to the i theta goes to ln squared of r over r cubed. This is just using um, our knowledge of the function, right? As r goes to infinity and as uh, f of r e to the i theta just is going to be um, our value of f around our semicircle. So that's contours gamma 1 and gamma 2. So this means that our integral across gamma 1 and gamma 2 of f of z dz is just going to be integrating. Um, I didn't actually write this out here, but since we're integrating over a path which has the length pi over 2 times r, we would just multiply this by pi over 2 times r since we're talking about absolute values, right? 
and overall as we take the limit as r goes to infinity it's just going to go to zero because that r to the r squared on the bottom is going to dominate okay now let's uh, evaluate our smaller circle integral and this is going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with we are going to make the substitution uh, z equals i plus epsilon e to the i theta so if we remember our gamma integral just sort of goes around in a circle around z equals i and so that's what this is going to do here. So as you can see, as theta goes from pi over 2 to negative 3 pi over 2, we're going to trace out a little circle right here, which matches up with our gamma integral. And we're going to get this very, very nasty expression. But fear not, we don't really have to deal with this expression because our differential is going to be i epsilon e to the i theta d theta. And this epsilon right here, again, we're taking the limit as epsilon goes to 0 from the right, is going to dominate completely and everything in here is just going to go to zero. Notice we do have this ln squared of epsilon right here, which um, also goes to infinity, but epsilon is going to be much stronger than this ln epsilon right here. So it's going to dominate, and our uh, gamma integral is going to go to zero as well. Now comes the more difficult part. Let's talk about i1. So for i1, we can rewrite this as a straight line uh, integrating from i infinity plus epsilon uh, to i plus epsilon. Again, epsilon goes to 0 plus, where all of this should be limited as epsilon goes to 0 plus, of f of z dz. So when we make the substitution z equals i v plus epsilon, we're going to get the integral from infinity to 1 of i over 2 of ln squared of I 1 plus v minus i epsilon minus ln squared of 1 minus v plus i epsilon plus all this annoying stuff on the bottom times i dv. However, it's not really difficult to deal with this because we're just going to, again, take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. So factoring out constants, flipping the bounds here, and taking the limit as epsilon goes to zero, we just get ln squared of 1 plus v for this one. However, for this one, we do have to be wary of um, our natural log because we have 1 minus v plus i epsilon. So if we go ahead and graph that point in the complex plane right here, that point is going to be all the way to the left and just a little bit above the real axis. Again, as epsilon goes to zero, this is going to come closer and closer to the real axis. So that means the argument of this number is going to go, again, we're always above the real axis, so it's going to go to pi. And again, our branch cut for the natural logarithm goes right here. If you remember in our uh, contour itself, the branch cut went up and down right here, but that was because we were multiplying it by i, so that means we actually shifted it over. So this is the branch cut, and since we're above the branch cut, that means our argument is between 0 and pi, and so our argument is just going to be pi. And so we go ahead and factor that into our value of the natural logarithm right here, and we get this nice integral right here. Again, it looks pretty nasty, but this is going to cancel with a lot of stuff from i2, so just keep that in mind. So when we evaluate i2, we have a very similar situation. We're integrating from i minus epsilon to i infinity minus epsilon. Substituting z equals I iv minus epsilon we get this expression right here. Again, looks pretty nasty, but we're just going to take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. In this case, i minus v minus i epsilon, again, epsilon is approaching zero from the right, is going to be just below the real axis right here. So that means the argument is actually going to go to negative pi since we're below the branch cut right here. And that's the only difference between these two integrals. So once we factor out constants and simplify everything as epsilon goes to zero, we get this expression right here. And then I've just gone ahead and copied down these two expressions. So we have i1 plus i2 is going to be all of this stuff, which looks very, very daunting again. But as you can see, we have ln squared of 1 plus v, ln squared of 1 plus v, ln v minus 1 plus i pi, ln v minus 1 minus i pi, all squared. And notice that the signs are opposite here and here. So everything in all of these integrals is going to cancel except for the impact of this negative sign right here. And once we multiply everything out, we find that we're going to get uh, 2 pi i times ln v minus 1, and then negative 2 pi i times ln v minus 1 right here. So once we, um, you know, combine those two, we're going to end up getting uh, that i1 plus i2 is just i over 2 times 4 pi i times this integral right here, which once we just simplify and then we flip the sign on the inside here, we get 2 pi times this integral right here, and then we can go over this. Once we make the substitution, uh, x equals v minus 1, we end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of ln x over x plus 1 times x plus 1 squared minus a squared, which some of you may recognize as the integral that I proved in the last video. So we just go ahead and substitute in the value here, and this is what we get for our sum of i1 and i2. 
Now let's go ahead and evaluate the residue, which is going to give us our overall value, the contour integral. So here it is. The contour integral is going to be 2 pi i times the residue of f of z at i a. So we're going to just have 2 pi i times the limit as z goes to i a of i over 2 times ln squared of 1 minus z minus ln squared of 1 plus i z um, times z minus i a over z times z plus i a times z minus i a. And as you can see here, we can just go ahead and cancel that last little factor right here. So let's just go ahead and cross that out. And then we just plug in uh, z equals i a everywhere. And so that's gonna we're going to end up getting 2 pi i times i over 2 over i a times 2 i a times this nasty uh, sum of natural log squared. And once we simplify everything, we get pi over 2a squared times ln squared of 1 plus a minus ln squared of 1 minus a. Just a quick reminder that this actually is giving us the value of the overall contour integral, which is, of course, going to be just the sum of all the parts of the contour integral, which is i plus i1 plus i2 plus our three different gamma integrals. And again, these three different gamma integrals are all just going to go to 0, as we proved earlier. Or I guess we didn't prove it, but we showed earlier that they were going to go to zero. So we can just go ahead and ignore those. And these ones converged to a value that we calculated earlier. So we can go ahead and substitute that in. All right, this is a pretty big equation right here, but we have um, pi over 2a squared. Okay, well, I'm not going to say everything out loud here, but you can see that a lot of this has symmetry. But once we go ahead and add this term over here over to the other side, we can see that um, the ln squared of 1 minus a is going to cancel on both sides, but this ln squared of 1 plus a is going to add to each other on each side. So we get that the integral from negative to infinity to infinity of our function, which was uh, this, this i integral right here, is pi over a squared times ln squared of 1 plus a, which means that the integral we're looking for is just 1 half that at pi over 2 a squared times ln squared of 1 plus a. Wow, what a magnificent result. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video because uh, I really enjoyed this uh, solving this problem. You know, it took a long time, but it was 100% definitely worth it. Um, you know, this integral was just so much fun, and I'm so glad that I got the chance to evaluate it. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope some of you will stick around for the videos that shall be coming out over the next week, which is actually a four-part series where I'm going to be teaching uh, contour integration and how to use it to solve definite integrals. Uh, it's a really dense topic, so that's why we're doing four different videos here, just to make sure that everybody will completely understand. Also, I hope to soon launch my Discord server, where you guys can come and ask me questions or suggest problems for future videos. So, without any further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching!